Prime Minister, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this 26th World Economic Forum on ASEAN. My name is Justin Wood. I look after the Asia Pacific region for the forum, uh, and it's my very great pleasure to formally open this meeting. There are two significant milestones associated with our summit this year. The first milestone is the fact that we are here in Cambodia. The World Economic Forum has been staging an ASEAN summit for the past 26 years, but this is the first year that we've ever held it here in Cambodia. And we're delighted to be here. I think all of you know that Cambodia as a country has experienced some terrible atrocities in recent years. But the story today is much brighter. The economy is growing by about 7% a year, and it's lifting millions of Cambodians out of poverty. Ten years ago, half this country was living below the poverty line. Today, that number has fallen to just 13%. Of course, significant challenges remain, but we hope that by bringing our summit to Cambodia this year, we can both highlight the positives as well as co contribute to addressing the ongoing challenges. The second milestone concerns the wider region. This is the 50th anniversary of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And I think that back in uh, 1967, when it all began, nobody could have predicted what was to follow. A time of deep conflict and regional tension has given way to an era of peace and stability. A group of deeply diverse nations are coming together and forging a community of mutual interest. Economic development is creating a giant middle class. Trade, investment, and integration continue to deepen between the 10 nations of ASEAN. Today, this region is one of the brightest stars on the global stage, and the ASEAN organization has played a very significant role in writing that story. But this summit is not a moment to glory in past achievements. Many ongoing challenges remain to be tackled. Many new challenges are still emerging. And so this summit is really an occasion to look to the future and to ask where the 10 countries of ASEAN go from here. Against that context, the theme of our summit this year is one of aspiration and hope. Our theme is youth, technology, and growth. From a youth perspective, the countries of ASEAN collectively have an extremely young population. And this young population should promise really a golden moment in the economic development story of the region. As the working age population grows in number, so it should boost spending, but also increase savings and those savings in turn can be recycled into building infrastructure, power stations, cities, um, and so on. If the region gets its policy mix right, the young population should really deliver a very potent and muscular demographic dividend. The second part of our theme, technology, refers to the fourth industrial revolution. The number of people with internet access across ASEAN is increasing every day by 124,000 people. That's nearly one million extra internet users every week. And it's forecast to keep growing at that rate for the next five years. Over that period, over those five years, that's an extra 230 million internet users, on top of the 320 million who are already online. And as this digital technology takes hold, the fourth industrial revolution could bring huge benefits to the region, driving financial inclusion, boosting access to affordable health care, opening up new forms of education, and creating new companies and new service sector jobs. 
In many ways, these two engines of future growth, youth and technology, um, really should feed off each other. Young people are much more open to embracing technology, and technology in turn makes it much easier to engage young people and to include them in the economic story. But nothing is guaranteed. Without the right policies today, the fourth industrial revolution could see jobs disappear. Automation is becoming ever cheaper. And a young and growing population without jobs is a formula for stagnation and social unrest. So these are the issues that we want to focus on uh, during our summit. As ASEAN celebrates its 50th anniversary, how do government leaders and business leaders ensure that the demographic dividend and the digital dividend pay up as fully as possible? How does the region build the brightest future for its young people? Today and tomorrow, the two days of our summit, we have a very rich program to explore all of these issues. Um, I'm sure the discussions will be fascinating um, and the ideas creative. Um, I wish you all um, a very fruitful and highly productive summit. And let me now hand over to the uh, host of this opening plenary, Dr. Philip Rosler, the Managing Director of the World Economic Forum. Philippe. Thank you, Justin, for giving us the framework for our this year's ASEAN Summit 2017. Honorable panelists, dear co-chairs, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome from my end. My name is Philip, and I have now the honor to moderate our high-level panel with our four heads of state, heads of government out of the ASEAN community. And what just, Justin mentioned, so our headline for this session is ASEAN, 50 years young, which will certainly contribute to our overall theme of this ASEAN summit, which is youth, technology, and growth. So let's start, and allow me, ladies and gentlemen, that I first introduce our high-level panel. To my left side, certainly, our host, Prime Minister of Cambodia, His Excellency Samdech Tech Hun Sen. To his left side, the Prime Minister of Laos, His Excellency Tong Lung Sisulit. Excellency, a warm welcome. And also, to his left side, President of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Excellency, a warm welcome. And last but not least, the Prime Minister of Vietnam, Nguyen Suan Phuc, Excellency for you as well, a warm welcome. And Excellencies, allow me now to ask you to bring us your speech as a welcome and to open this summit officially on the lectern. Excellency Prime Minister Hun Sen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Philip. Excellent, the President of the Philippines and the Chairman of ASEAN, Excellency Prime Ministers of La PDA, Excellencies uh, Prime Minister of Vietnam, Excellencies, Madam, ladies and gentlemen. Cambodia is extremely honored to be a host of this World Economic Forum on ASEAN under the theme Youth, Technologies, and Growth, securing ASEAN's digital and demographic dividend. On behalf of the royal government and people of Cambodia, I would like to extend a warmest welcome to Your Excellencies, Madam, Ladies and Gentlemen, Head of State and Government, Ministers and Delegates, 
and all the distinguished guests who have come to this ancient land of ASEAN. Indeed, this event is happening along the celebration of the 50th anniversary of ASEAN establishment that provides an excellent platform for all national, regional, and international stakeholders to discuss and exchange views on emerging trends related to three important topics. ASEAN and changing global context, ASEAN economic connectivities, and ASEAN juice dividend. This topic or the deciding factors of ASEAN futures development. I'm delighted to note that this forum has brought together so many policy makers, CEO of international corporation, businessmen, and Jews from all walks of life, both within and outside the region. This reflects great attention given to ASEAN as a whole, and particularly to Cambodia. Therefore, I believe that our discussion will be vigorous and realistic in providing policy choice and implementation measures and practical project for the long-term interest of ASEAN. Excellencies, Madam, ladies and gentlemen, over the past five decades, ASEAN has undergone a complex transformation since its founding from a region with the two blocks wrecked by conflict, misery, and poverty to a region of peace, stability, and development, and a closely integrated community under a shared vision of ASEAN community characterized by the high economic growth and deep structural transformation. Moreover, ASEAN has been positively responding to the resolution of all issues, both at regional and global levels, particularly in contributing to peace, security, safety, and stabilities for all nations in both Asia and the world. All these are all the contributing factors making ASEAN an indispensable strategic partner for all the region, all the countries, regional and international organizations across the globe. Undoubtedly, the newly changing global context in all aspects of recent geopolitical, geoeconomic, and political social development, such as the rising anti-globalization movement and protectionism, rising nationalism, and populist policies, rising temperatures in conflict across some region, combined with a prolonged economic slowdown, have generated many new challenges for our national and regional development. Notwithstanding of this, and in comparison to other regions, ASEAN has managed to maintain strong peace and security with good cooperation. While some other regional integration in the world is experiencing a setback, ASEAN is forging ahead 
with even stronger determination its path for deeper integration in building ASEAN communities, which is based on three pillars, political security community, economic community, and social cultural community, <coughs> and true greater collaboration in all areas with our major partners. <coughs> Though ASEAN is a regional grouping of 10 different countries, her past experience and efforts in building this community based on mutual respect, non interference in others' internal affairs, and consensus and flexibilities in decision making for everyone to contribute to the development of ASEAN, known as the ASEAN way, have shown strength and fundamentals of ASEAN resiliencies over the long run. On this basics, we will be forging ahead together in carrying out tasks with unwavering commitment toward a unified goal of building ASEAN community with one identity, ASEAN unities in diversity. Excellencies, Madam, ladies and gentlemen. Nowadays, ASEAN is the third largest economy in Asia and the seventh in the world, with total GDPs of about US dollar 2.6 trillion in 2016. ASEAN has become one of the world's fastest growing investment destinations. accounting for 11% of total global foreign direct investment, FDI, inflow, as compared with just 5% in 2007. Moreover, ASEAN has also become one of the most attractive tourist destinations both cultural tourism and natural tourism, with good security and high standard hospitalities. Looking forward, ASEAN has envisaged ambition, vision, ambitious vision in building ASEAN Economic Communities 2025, which is very highly integrated and cohesive economy with four key characteristics including, first, a single market and production base. Second, a highly competitive economic region. Third, a region of equitable economic development. And four, a region fully integrated into the global economy. To achieve this vision, I believe ASEAN has to continue its focus on important agenda as follows. First, continue strengthening and expanding cooperation to ensure full peace security, safety, and stability through promoting a closed dialogue, building trust, as well as resolving regional issues with peace and based on the principle of international law. Second, continue ensuring that economic growth is robust 
balanced, sustainable, and inclusive, with great attention given to reducing development gaps. Third, continue ensuring successful implementation of Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivities 2025 in every aspects, including physical connectivities, institutional connectivities, and people-to-people -people connectivities, aiming to promote competitiveness, development, inclusiveness, and economic resilience in the region. Fourth, continue promoting ASEAN centralities in a regional cooperation and strengthening ASEAN capacities in resolving any problems at regional and global level. Thus, the first priority of ASEAN is to reach the conclusion of a regional comprehensive economic partnership, RCEP, comprising of 16 countries with ASEAN as the backbone, which has a market size of 3.4 trillion people and GDP of US dollar 22.4 trillion, or about 30% of the world's economy in 2015. Additionally, we have we also have to ensure that the adopted growth vision and agenda can effectively respond to the new context of rapid changing world, especially the strong momentum of the fourth industrial revolution, which creates a new growth dynamism characterized by high flexibilities, dependence on technologies and markets, yet at the same time could create obstacles and challenges to the society, including political and security, economic and social cultural aspects at both national and regional level. Without a doubt, with new technological revolution, will reset development for industry, trade, labor market, and education, as well as governance and social security system, which require ASEAN to cope with the appropriate policies respond in order to support the process of structural change enhanced by this revolution. In this regard, ASEAN must have an integrated agenda aligning to this trend in order to seize the opportunities and to address unexpected problems by devoting great attention to promoting qualities of education, promoting skill development, addressing employment issues, formulating an effective social protection system, as well as addressing the issues of social inequalities and cyber security, etc. As a responsible members, Cambodia is well prepared to work with all stakeholders to undertake tests aiming to achieve the ASEAN Community's Vision 2025, forging ahead together for long-term peace, security, stabilities, and prosperities for all nations in the region. 
Excellencies, Madam, Ladies and Gentlemen. Cambodia is a small economy with high level of openness. This is a primary reason that we have attached great importance to regional integration and connectivity. As a result, Cambodia's economy is regarded as one of the new emerging economies as well as one of the most successful post-war country, which is based on robust economic growth on average of about 7.6% per annum from 1994 to 2016, and has re maintained macroeconomic stabilities, attained manageable inflation, well-managed public debt, achieved remarkable poverty reduction, as well as increased GDP per capita 4.5 times. from U.S. dollar to 188 in the year 2000 to U.S. dollar $1,302 in 2016. Indeed, trade pl has played a crucial role toward development of Cambodia's economy. Becoming a member of ASEAN communities and World Trade Organization has promoted Cambodia's linkage with a regional and global value change and production network. For the medium term, Cambodia's economic growth is forecast to be robust, with growth around 7% per annum. In order to achieve its long-term vision, becoming upper-middle-income countries by 2030 and high-income country by 2050s, Cambodia will unwaveringly and actively continue implementing open domestic policies through devoting a greater deal of effort on linking and integrating of all sectors into a regional and global economy, speeding up structural reforms as well as to upgrading institutional capacities and human resources. Moving forward, Cambodia is envisaging a trend of technologies advancement. Similar to other countries in the region, Cambodia is rapidly absorbing advanced technologies, particularly in new industry sectors and among youth. In 2016, mobile phone penetration was more than a hundred and twenty-five percent of popular of the total population, and internet penetration was forty-seven percent. Why in two thousand eight, mobile phone penetration was only twenty-five percent, and internet penetration was merely zero point thirteen percent. The new era of technologies is an opportunity for Cambodian youth to speed up development with greater momentum. In this context, the royal government of Cambodia has been paying great attention on youth and technologies development, especially through the reform of education system and training with great success on promoting skill development in science, technologies, engineering, and mathematics. 
as well as promoting entrepreneurship and soft skill for lifelong training. Moreover, industrial development policies 2015-2025 has reoriented our efforts and open for private sector's engagement with an aim of supporting technology sector's development in Cambodia. In this spirit, I appeal to all business people to join hands with the Royal Government of Cambodia to create a favorable environment for nurturing and developing this potential sectors. Cambodia is optimistic and we are of the view that Asia century will definitely enable ASEAN to lead not only in driving economic growth but also in developing technology sectors. Finally, I wish the forum great success as planned and wish Excellencies, Madam, Ladies and Gentlemen, a pleasant stay with good memories about Cambodia. Now I wish to officially announce the opening of World Economic Forum on ASEAN 2017 from now on. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister Hun Sen, for opening our ASEAN Summit. May I ask now the other heads of state, heads of government, to share with us your thoughts, your ideas, in terms of the 50th anniversary of the ASEAN community. I would like to start with the Prime Minister of Laos, Tong Lung Sisulit. The floor is yours. Thank you, Justin. Your Excellency, Samdet, Kamarasida Patai Techo Hun Sen, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia, Excellency, uh, President of uh, the Philippines, Prime Minister of Vietnam, and Son Phuc. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Your Excellency, Samdet Hun Sen and the World Economic Forum for inviting me to participate in this World Economic Forum on ASEAN, as well as for the excellent arrangement made by our host. I do share the view expressed by Prime Minister Hun Sen just now, which highlighted the growth of ASEAN throughout the past five decades, as well as our vision to foster development and growth as a community which are insightful uh, to us. This year marks the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. Throughout the past five decades, ASEAN has evolved and been contested through various challenges. Nevertheless, ASEAN has recorded significant achievements, for instance, in maintaining peace and security in the region, enhancing cooperation within the region and with external partners, attaining a steady economic growth, as well as offering potential for being a single market and production base, with, uh, which uh, Prime, Minister Hun, Prime Minister Hun Sen also highlighted with the combined GDP of 2.4 trillion US dollars in 19 uh, in 2016. Nevertheless, amidst the rapid changing complex and predictable regional and international environments, 
ASEAN must adapt and adjust itself in order to overcome the emerging challenges in the years ahead. This includes demographic transition, the imbalance uh, between different age groups, such as the younger and the older population. It is estimated that the percentage of aging population will increase uh, rapidly in some ASEAN countries after 2020, which may cause direct impact on social economic development in ASEAN. Distinguished delegates, against this backdrop, ASEAN must adopt appropriate measures to ensure sustainability of its labor market. To this end, ASEAN has made tremendous efforts in promoting quality education, aiming at developing labor skills in order to increase effectiveness and efficiency in production, taking into account its limited labor force. At the same time, ASEAN has also given particular attention to the aging population by promoting decent health care system, improve access to access health care services, uh, disseminating health care related information and strengthening pension scheme, as well as promoting lifelong learning among the older age groups, thus enabling them to keep up with the new te uh, technology and knowledge for continuing their work as appropriate even after the retirement age. It is also essential to create an environment conducive for public private sector as well as families and the whole society to make greater contribution to providing proper care for aging population, both physically and spirit, uh, in uh, spiritual terms. As for the Lao PDR with 6.5 million people, the majority of whom are relatively at young age, which accounts for 60%, especially those under 20, the age of 25 of the total population. However, the low level of education, labor skills remain a challenge, which to some extent have affected employment opportunities, startup jobs uh, and businesses and supply of adequate labor force for development activities, including limited access of younger people to new technology and innovation, and their participation in social economic development remains moderate. Therefore, in order to address the said challenges, the Lao government has continued to implement various human resource development plans and programs by focusing on providing greater access to education for all. For instance, ensuring net enrollment rate of 90% in primary school, 85% in lower secondary school, and 60% in upper secondary level, including 60% enrollment rate in vocational institutes and 5% in other professional trainings in order to meet the demand of labor market and national development need from now up to 2025. In addition, private sector and foreign investors have also been strongly encouraged to make greater contribution to development of education and health sectors in the country through improving the existing investment laws, easing barriers which have hampered social economic development in order to better facilitate investments flow. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in overcoming the current uncertainties and challenges, ASEAN will continue to strengthen continue to strengthen 
uh, regional economic integration as well as to engage with other regions of the world in accordance with the directions set out by ASEAN leaders aimed at ensuring a dynamic ASEAN economic community. On this note, I would like to call upon the private sector, which constitutes a driving force for economic growth, to continue improving and adapting themselves in order to increase competitiveness and relevancy in the age of innovation and the fourth industrial revolution. The public sector as well, on the other hand, must also chart out appropriate policies to promote the increasing role of the private sector. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prime Minister. And let's immediately move to President Duterte. Please share with you, with us, the vision for ASEAN, maybe in the next 50 years. <clears throat> Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon. I thank you and the World Economic Forum for this opportunity to address you. ASEAN has long been here on way since establishment 50 years ago. We have overcome initial difficulties to become a more united region of great promise and substantial progress. Guided by common values and shared aspirations, ASEAN is at the core of regionalism in Southeast Asia. Asia's 10 member states now stand firmly at the center of the future of the ASEAN Pacific region. ASEAN is becoming a significant global player. It plays a key role in promoting peace and stability in the region and it is an emerging economic powerhouse. The region is now the world's sixth largest economy, the third largest consumer base. It stands at the crossroads of global trade flows. ASEAN is home to more than 600 people, making it larger than European Union or North America. ASEAN has the third largest labor force in the world. Our young population is producing a democratic dividend. Understandably, there is increased investor confidence in our region. But while we celebrate ASEAN's achievement, we recognize that more needs to be done for our people. We continue to face many challenges integration and connectivity efforts have to be ramped up. Technical changes impact on the workforce as well as the trade and investment and capital flows. Transnational crime threaten to undermine economic progress and development. Gaps threaten to hold us back from achieving the inclusive growth for our people. But we cannot stand by and let these challenges hold us back from achieving the future of our people which deserve the changes. ASEAN Chair, the Philippine resolves to establish meaningful partnership for positive change as we engage the larger world. We aim to operalize operationalize the Asian goal of achieving a vibrant, sustainable, and highly integrated economy. Our vision is an ASEAN economic community that is relevant, responsive, and transformative. We seek strengthened channels for connectivity. We will intensify efforts to narrow the development gap across all areas. This as we seek ASEAN's unity and solidarity 
at all times to a common principled position that enhances its role and amplifies its voice in the international fora. We will continue to seize opportunities with our economic partners within and outside the region. But make no mistake, in pursuit of integration, it is distinctly the Asian way that will guide us. What does that mean? It means achieving sustainable and inclusive development for a region according to our needs at our own pace and guided by our core, core values. The ASEAN has allowed us to get where we are now. It will take us forward furthermore. ASEAN is cognizant of the need for more inclusive participation in the community building process. We want to ensure that the benefits of integration are felt by all our people in the region. But we face a development gap that must be addressed. While the region has been seen poverty levels decrease by half in the last 50 years, development remains good. There remains a huge disparity in our GDP per capita from a low $1,200 to a high of nearly 53. One way to address this is to remain committed to ASEAN Integration Work Plan 2. It is targeted to accelerate economic integration of our newer partners, namely Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Another is by promoting inclusive innovation-led growth. The Philippines champions economic priority delivery bubbles that provide an amazing environment for the MSMEs to develop and become regionally and globally competitive. MSMEs, after all, are significant contributors to ASEAN community. By boosting MSME capacities, we support equitable development, competitiveness, and robustness in the region's economy. Certainly, our community can only become strong if it is well-connected and highly integrated region. The master plan of ASEAN connectivity of 2025 must not remain a vision, but a reality if you want to promote competitiveness, inclusiveness, and a greater sense of a community in the region. In this regard, we have to focus on sustainable infrastructure, digital innovation, seamless logistics, regulatory excellence, and people mobility. Most importantly, we should invest in human capital. Analysts point out that the Philippines, together with Southeast Asian countries, is a demographic sweet spot and is likely to post Asia's fastest economic growth rates in the coming years. The youth is certainly a key sector that we must invest in. The ASEAN Work Plan on Youth 2016-2020 encourages youth entrepreneurship, employment and employability, awareness, volunteerism, and resilience. The plan deserves our full support. The ASEAN youth are among the best and are most creative, intelligent, and innovative in the world. We must empower them to be the best version of themselves. But we cannot turn a blind eye on the scourge of illegal drugs that threatens our youth and the future of our societies. We need to take a committed stand to dismantle 
and destroy the illegal drug trade apparatus. We must reaffirm our commitment to realize a drug-free ASEAN community. Fifty years ago, the ASEAN Founding Fathers headed the call for unity and acted with dedication, determination, and foresight. Five decades hence, ASEAN has a compelling narrative of our world. ASEAN is now closer to achieving one vision, one identity, and one community. But the ASEAN story does not end here. This is a continuing tale that we must shape and build for the interest of our peoples. The Philippines will do its part. ASEAN member states will do their part as well. Join us together and let us be partners in an enduring engagement to bring positive change for our world and our region. Thank you. Thank you, President Duterte, as the President of the Philippines, but as well as the this year's 2017 Chair of the ASEAN Community. Now allow me to ask Prime Minister Nguyen Suan Phuc to share with us your ideas in terms of the 50th anniversary of the ASEAN community. Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia, Samdat Hun Sen, President of the Philippines, uh, Mr. Duterte, Prime Minister of Laos, Tonglun, Sizzlet, Mr. Philip Rosler, Managing Director, WAF, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to express my sincere thanks to Prime Minister Hun Sen and the government of Cambodia for the whole warm hospi hospitality got to our delegation and excellent arrangements for the WEF on ASEAN by the host country and the World Economic Forum as we look back into 50 years of ASEAN development and move forward to the future. I share with you uh, uh, all the points you have raised and I'd like to emphasize the following points. The third industrial revolution with the broad internet contributed significantly to the impressive economic growth as and over the past five decades. I believe that the third uh, industry, uh, the fourth industrial revolution with new technologies will pose new opportunities and challenges to ASEAN. First, ASEAN is part of the Asia-Pacific, the world's most dynamic growth region. I think that despite certain difficulties facing Asia-Pacific, the region remains an important growth agent of the world. Uh, according to World Bank 2015, ASEAN was the world's sixth largest economy and will be the fifth largest one by 2020. In the ASEAN, Vietnam is among the most dynamic economies with GDP growth 6% in the last 30 years and expected to grow from 6.5 to 7% period. ASEAN's dynamic development is open, opening up opportunities for businesses and investors. Second, ASEAN is market uh, six, uh, more than 600 million people with rising income, two-thirds of them are under working age. ASEAN is one of the regions having youngest population in the world. And more importantly, the ASEAN people are hardworking, 
eager to learn and have desire to rise with strong startup visit spirit. This is really a big market for businesses, for companies to invest, do business, and implement innovative projects. In Vietnam, about 60 percent of our 93 million population are under 35 years old. They are able to access to new technologies quickly. 52 percent of population are Internet users. 2015, Vietnam ranks in top 10 in Asia Pacific and top 30 worldwide on software manufacturing. And we want to be the top 10 worldwide by 2020 in the terms of software and digital content industries with 1 million IT workers. This is important advantage, and reality shows that major IT firms such as Fujitsu, Intent, IBM, Microsoft, GA, uh, Samsung, Siemens, Akaten, and others are expanding their businesses in Vietnam. Third, Vietnam is working with ASEAN members to establish a single market by 2025. Most barriers to trade, investment, a skilled labor movement will be removed. At the same time, we have signed 12 FTAs, including high standard ones, and improvement 2016, the World Bank said that we have jumped nine dots in terms of the uh, uh, improvement. And we are the host of APEC 2017. We'd like to welcome you all to APEC events to promote economic connectivity, uh, competitiveness, and innovation in the digital age. You are fully aware of challenges facing us and how, how to fully tap the potentials of the young worker force in the global context to maintain its dynamic growth and competitiveness we cannot rely solely on resources and young and unskilled labor. We need to generate new growth momentum coming from innovation. And besides reforming economic governance, as I need to equip its people, especially young workers, with necessary skills to master new technologies to meet new requirements for employment opportunities. With that, as such as where ASEAN considers to establish a working group to make policy recommendations on education, vocational training, promotion of startup and innovation, establish a startup market, and encourage companies to invest in or buy out the startup of the ASEAN talents. As a dynamic member of ASEAN, Vietnam is striving towards sustainable development based on better growth quality and the opportunities provided by the fourth revolution to increase productivity, competitiveness, so that we can move up to that uh, in the global value chain. Vietnam is committed to building and enabling government for development to institutional reforms and favorable business environment for people, especially the youth. We will revitalize education, promote starts up innovation dynamism of the country. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, throughout its uh, 50 years of development, ASEAN is proud to be a successful model of regional integration with an increasing connected ASEAN community that plays an increasingly important role in region and the world. Such achievements must be treasured and should be the basis for us to believe in a peaceful, stable, and prosperous future, people-oriented and rules-based ASEAN. We will do our best to work with ASEAN and its partners for this noble goal. Thank you very much for your attention. So, dear Prime Ministers, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, first I would like to thank our honorable speaker for their speeches to open our ASEAN summit. And you all mentioned the role and the importance of the youth. 
And yesterday, we had a remarkable open forum with more than 2,700 young Cambodians. And they could raise their vision, their ASEAN dream. And it turns out that they wanted to have an ASEAN based on values, freedom, democracy, rule of law, human rights, fight against corruption, and certainly peace and stability. And listen to your speeches, I think that fits. Listen to the leaders of the ASEAN community. So ladies and gentlemen, again, a thank you to our honorable speaker, and please a big hand to our heads of state and heads of government. And one wish was the question of inclusion and inclusive growth. On that note, I would like now to move to our Social Entrepreneur Award of the Year here in ASEAN 2017. I would like to call on stage Goy Fumin for the Schwab Foundation of Social Entrepreneurship. Goy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Philip. Distinguished panel, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. We are now pleased to present the 2017 Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award for Asia. With the Social Entrepreneurship Award, the Schwab Foundation recognizes and celebrates social innovation, inclusiveness, and social progress. We are happy to have many of the social entrepreneurs from the region with us today. Those who are participating in this meeting have all been distinguished for their contributions to improving the lives of thousands, if not millions, of people. They are based throughout the Asia region, working in diverse fields, and are pioneers in developing new methods to tackling unemployment, agricultural productivity, rural development, homelessness, and more. Please join me in giving them a round of applause. Today, we have the pleasure of recognizing two Social Entrepreneurs of the Year from Asia, Gregory Dyer and Nga Trung of Medical Technology and Transfer Services. MTTS radically reduced the cost of life-saving neonatal devices that otherwise would not be available to people in poor parts of the world. Such devices treat conditions such as hypothermia, jaundice, respiratory distress syndrome, and others. As of 2016, over 1.3 million babies in Asia and Africa have been treated using MTTS devices. Unfortunately, Nga could not make it here today, and Gregory will be accepting on her behalf as well. So please join us in congratulating co-founders Gregory Dyer and Nga Trang. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I would like to close our opening plenary. I wish you fruitful discussion and fruitful sessions. Thank you very much.